So this might legitly be cheating guys. I feel like the most amazing artist at the same exact time that I feel like my artistic ability is being totally stripped away from me. If you've ever seen the program Luminar Neo, it's insane. You can literally just replace skies with the tap of a button or add lighting directions and layers with a few sliders. In wildlife photography, doing heavy manipulation is definitely controversial to say the least. And I've never been into it, but when Luminar reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try out their program, I was like, you know what, it's Christmas. Why not? Let's have some fun. I just couldn't resist trying it. So I know, I know a lot of you guys are gonna hate me for this, but I just thought it would be a fun little experiment. And I'm not saying that you should be using this with everything that you're doing. And if you are using it, you should definitely be transparent about it. All right, so we got Luminar Neo pulled up right here. And we're gonna start out with this Pelican image. And um, you can see we got catalog, presets, edit. So we'll go to the edit tab. And what I really want to focus on today is this creative section, which is really unique. I think that's a lot of what the uniqueness is that's offered in this program for wildlife photography, as well as the favorite section of Enhance AI and Sky AI. So on this image, we're going to start out with this relight tool, which I think is really, really awesome and cool. So you have this brightness near and this brightness far slider, and you can see this near part of the image. So it's determining that the rock and the pelican are closer than the background. So if we pull up the brightness near, you'll notice that it brightens up the foreground kind of area or the, the area in focus in this image, but essentially the rock and the pelican kind of darkens the background, right? So we see that before and after, which is pretty cool because it helps keep my eyes a little bit more locked on the pelican now, as opposed to the background. We can do the same thing with the brightness far, right? We can pull that down or pull that up, but for sake of here, I'll just, I'll just leave it pretty much neutral. You can also adjust the depth. So you can kind of see as I'm adjusting the depth, how much it's determining as being the closest part of the image and the furthest part. Um, so in this case, we'll kind of keep it a little sharper around there, but that's a pretty cool tool right there because immediately what that tool does is it kind of recenters and refocuses kind of where your, your eye is drawn to as a viewer due to the exposure in the image. So I really like that tool. That's a fun tool. You can also add in some atmosphere. So for example, if we wanted to add in some uh, some mist or let's just say some haze here, you can add in some haze. And um, it just does a little bit in this image. It's really just doing it right around um, the rock right there. Uh, let's see what happens if we go with mist here. That adds in a little bit better all around it. So that is another option of what we could do if we wanted. Uh, could darken or brighten that haze, um, but I might actually leave the atmosphere alone for now. The other thing that I did really want to do in this though, however, actually we'll, we'll do some uh, making it a little bit more dramatic, just slightly, just helps bring out the contrast a little bit, but this is what I really want to mess with here. This is a, this is a fun tool. So let's place the sun center, like maybe out here, for example. Then let's throw in some sun rays and oh man, that looks fantastic. Oh, that is so cool. If only this was real. <laughs> uh, if only I captured that in the actual image, that would be amazing. But you'll notice like as I did that, see how it kind of gave like a, a direction to the light. It kind of darkened over here in the image, brightened it over here, made it all kind of feel like it's coming from that direction, contrasted the image accordingly, and then obviously adds in those sunbeams, which is just beautiful. You can add in those sunbeam uh, lengths, so you can give it a lot more of kind of like it's uh, kind of bending into the lens like that, right? Um, you can do the width kind of of those sunbeams and how much it's kind of penetrating the lens. <laughs> Uh, you could also do the overall look, which uh, matters how much it's affecting kind of the whole look of the image. So it's pretty dang cool. And there's a lot of details here with these sun rays. You could also even do um, like the amount of the sun glow, um, the radius. You can mess with the rays setting. So like the number of sun rays. So if I wanted to add a lot more like that, right? Uh, that feels like a little bit too much for me though in this photo. I'd rather go with the slimmer amount. That looks more natural to me. Um, you could also add the randomization in terms of where those sun rays are going to be placed. Zero was pretty fine for me. Maybe I'll adjust it up a little bit. Let's see, you got to find the right frame. Maybe something like that feels a little bit more natural. You could also adjust the warmth if you wanted, so you can actually make it uh, feel more warm or not. That's adjusting the actual sun warmth, actually. Here, let me adjust the rays. So see how that's adjusting the rays there. 
Personally, I don't want to make them feel like they're much warmer, so I'll leave it about there. But that is by far the coolest effect out there, in my opinion. I love the Sunrise effect in this program after playing around with it just for a bit. So I love the results here. Pretty dang cool. And it's fun to see kind of what results you could get in this image. But let's go now to the next image. So this one's going to be a lot of fun. And the reason why I'm really excited to show you guys this image is this is going to show off um, the sky feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a sky that was not actually there. So this was a high key image and I intended to shoot it this way. So I intended to shoot it as a high key image because there really wasn't that beautiful sky going on in the background, right? But we can create a good sky in the background with Luminar Neo. <laughs> so we're going to go for this. Um, there's one that I found earlier that I thought was pretty cool for this situation. Let me see if I can find it again. I think it was this one right here. Dramatic Sky 1. I thought this matched so well. Look at how freaking cool that is. That is so cool. It just makes this beautiful, stormy, kind of cool scene. You got the sunbeams coming down from the top right there. Just absolutely Oh my gosh, looks so cool. But as you'll notice, it's all in focus, which looks nasty, looks gnarly, because this is out of focus, right? Um, and this is the only in focus part. So that's the way that I shot the image, so we need to adjust it accordingly, which the cool thing is, you can do this. So let me find this again. Defocus, so sky adjustment, defocus, and you can pull that back out of focus. That way, you're not accidentally messing up the way that the depth of field would look like in this image. So if we pull this up to maybe about like here, for example, that probably looks about right. Now we have a very properly set kind of depth of field in this image. So I really like that. We could add some atmospheric haze into it. Um, yeah, and good stuff like that, which all this looks is already pretty good. So that's already looking really cool. But what you'll notice though, when I added that sky in is that it really just brought down the mood of this whole image and specifically in the goal, which I don't want the goal to be that dark now. So what we're gonna do to adjust that is we're going to go to our same beautiful relight technique and we are going to uh sorry about that we are going to relight the near so that's going to be one thing we do and that helps pull it out already a little bit you'll see that it kind of shifts the attention to the the front of the scene a little bit more but then we are also going to go to dodge and burn and what we can do here is now we can kind of lighten the the area that the the goal is in. So obviously that's a little bit too much. Uh, let's see, softness, strength, size. Let's go to size, adjust that to be less harsh. And we're going to pull down the strength quite a lot. Now let's try this. See how that's kind of brightening up this area of the image. I like the results here. Kind of make sure that all this is a little bit brighter back there too. And let's go back to relight and pull up that near brightness a little bit more one more time. Create that depth. More near. There we go. And that's looking a little bit better. So now we still have the lighting a little bit more focused on the goal specifically, but we still have that beautiful stormy kind of background in the background as well. So I really, really like the results here. It looks super cool, super dope. If only that was what I captured out in nature, that would have been like such a freaking cool shot, but it wasn't, but I can make up for it with Luminar Neo. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool feature right there. I love that and I love the results there. Let's move into this great egret image. This one I wasn't super happy with. Like the only thing I really liked about this photo was this singular kind of bokeh ball with the really interesting lighting on the egret, but the rest I wasn't super happy with. So I kind of wanted to just see if we could make something of it here in Luminar Neo and kind of do something with it, I guess. So some of the things I was thinking originally was um, using Enhance. So we can use Enhance to just kind of bring out some of these details a little bit on um, the egret and actually just minorly because it's already a lot of pretty intense adjustments right there. Um, we want to do the relight also. Um, I really want to bring out the nearness. So when I do that, I'm probably just going to, well, maybe not quite max, but very close. Um, because I like the way that it kind of just pulls all the attention to the egret and just darkens the background even more, right? And we could probably even pull down, eh, we don't want to do it too much, yeah. Just leave it there. But again, I want to put a sun in this image. So let's try this one more time right here. Um, just to give some fun kind of effect to it. I am addicted to the sunrise effect, guys. Not going to lie. Just a lot of fun. 
Uh, let's see. Let's go bring those arrays down. Uh, let's see. Randomize them a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to go for an overall look. Bring that up a bit. Bring up the sun rays length. There we go. That looks better. That looks a little bit more natural. Penetration. Um, hmm. Not quite sure on that one. Maybe around there. Um, let's see. Let's see if I should adjust that sun a little bit more. Oh, it's not quite. Yeah. There we go. That looks pretty good. So that already looks really interesting. We can even do a super contrast here. Really contrast those highlights. So I like what I like about this tool is you can kind of select certain areas and contrast that only. So you'll notice that when I do the highlights, it doesn't affect the rest. So it really kind of just keeps those highlights extra contrasted. Shadows, um, I could contrast extra as well, or the midtones. The midtones would probably be the other option that I could mess around with here. And that's pretty fun overall. Pretty cool. Definitely looks better than before. Um, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, looks interesting. Looks like it has a little bit of artistic kind of flair and value to it now. So that's pretty fun. And I like the results of that great eager image. Lastly, let's go into this American Crow image, though. This one should be a fun one. So let's see if we can do something interesting and fun here. We got an American Crow silhouetted. Let's see if, first of all, we can find a sky. Oh, oh. We can have a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot, man. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, again, this is definitely um, far from um, realistic. So again, just reiterating that. And I will be disclosing that anytime I use these things in my images. So don't uh, be worried about being deceived from me. But this is freaking cool. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, let's try defocusing that to get a proper amount of focus kind of on that. Uh, let's see. How much do I have to defocus this? I feel like that might be okay right around there. I mean, this is already not looking real. So I don't think that it's like, okay, you need to make this depth of field perfectly. Because in reality, this depth of field would be even more out of focus, right? But it's already not looking exactly the most real so i might as well just kind of lean into the artistic kind of vibe of it a little bit more <laughs> um but dang that is looking cool tell me that does not look freaking cool that looks so cool oh my gosh okay so we got all that done i mean really that's that's really what i was interested in doing in this one but let's try to add in some fog for example see if that really helps it does actually help a little bit kind of defines a silhouette a little bit more in my opinion Let's see, add in some depth. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, because that kind of, it feels like it kind of gives a little bit of uh, character and atmosphere to the image, hence the name, ha Atmosphere AI, right? Um, so I think that's pretty good there. Don't think we need to do any relighting or dodging and burning, contrast, um, all that good stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty much liking where this is set now. That's pretty cool. So anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's Luminar Neo, and uh, that is the transformation on this American Grow image. So obviously this program is really cool, but I'm also really conflicted about it. It's a really fun toy to play around with, but for something like wildlife photography, in which most people are looking to view the natural world that you shot in that image, you can easily use this program to show things that were not what you captured in the slightest. I might play around with it occasionally just for the sake of it, to see what I can come up with and have some fun with it. But when doing so, I'll definitely always put a disclaimer letting everyone know that the photo was heavily manipulated with this Luminar Neo program. For me, it probably won't be a regular use case as it feels like it strips away some of my ability to learn and creatively edit and represent nature accurately, but I'll definitely use it now and then just for fun. With that being said, if you're looking to purchase Luminar Neo, Luminar was kind enough to provide me with a $10 discount on Pro and Explorer yearly subscriptions. So if you are looking to purchase it, use my affiliate link below to get your discount. Hope you guys enjoyed this fun little video and I'll see you guys next time.